Hey guys, welcome back. It's the holiday season and with all the sales going on, I decided to buy a new tool. So I bought a new Ryobi 18 volt staple gun and it's going to replace the old Ryobi staple gun I've been using. Now this isn't a direct comparison between the two. This is actually a uh, staple and nail gun. So this is quite a bit bigger and heavier because of that. But I primarily have always used this as a staple gun. And I'm just gonna put this in front of the box here and show you the size difference between these two tools. Even though this one's still in the box, you'll be able to see. As you can see, my old gun is bigger than the box that the new gun is coming to. So I'm really looking forward to using a much lighter and smaller staple gun in the future so that I can probably retire this one or just use it as a backup one if I need to on hand. So before I get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click on the bell so that you know when our videos are posted. All right, let's rip this thing open and see what's inside. pack of staples and it looks like the hanging clip to be able to hang off your tool belt. Instruction manuals. The nail gun. And the little tool guide thing that they always give you. Alright. And here it is. New staple gun. So let's see the uh, size comparison between the old one and the new one here in person. So if you can see this, it's about a half inch shorter than the old one. And it's significantly smaller in length. Probably three inches, I would say. And then width-wise, they're probably about the same. So, and then weight. This one feels a little more front heavy actually, um, but this is definitely heavier overall. I would say probably at least two pounds heavier. So, <clears throat> but this is much nicer if I had to be stapling for long periods of time, especially if I'm gonna be working overhead. This, is, this already feels better in my hand and it's gonna be less taxing, even with this big battery attached to the bottom of it. This is just better balanced overall than the old one was. All right, so this staple gun takes your standard T50 3 8 inch wide staples, and it will take a, uh, for lengthwise, it goes from a quarter inch up to 9 sixteenths of an inch. So you have a variety of staple sizes you can put in here. Uh, I'm usually using the quarter inches or around 5 sixteenths of an inch staple is typically what I've got on hand. All right, so let's get into the actual specs of it and some of the features. So we got your magazine up front, and if you want to load your staples, just flip it over, make sure your battery's not installed at the time, and you got a spring clip here. So just push in on it, and it's pretty much spring-loaded. It'll pop out, and then you just drop your staples in. You can slide them up to the top if you want. Slap it closed, and you're loaded. Now for setting the strength of it, or setting how powerful it is, you've got a dial wheel here on the back. And I wanna mention that there's also a gauge up on the top. So my old one has the dial wheel on the back, but it doesn't let you know how strong or powerful it is. You just kinda of have to look at how far the, the wheel has been screwed in or unscrewed. So this one, as I screw it clockwise to tighten, it will get Moves that white bar up towards the top, and that should be about max, all right? And as I unscrew, you see that white bar move, and I'm coming back down towards the minimum. So this is a lot nicer in being able to actually know exactly how powerful you set the staple gun. Most staple guns, they have their safety incorporated, so you have to have this fully depressed, and then the staple will actually fire. So. Just keep that in mind. And then last of all, if you are doing screen or wire and you need some assistance being able to get that on, it does have a nifty little attachment accessory here that just lift up on the piece of metal, take it off. And if you see this, it says store. So you got your little indent that sticks out 
And when I slide it on there, it's in storage mode. When I lift it up, if I slide it forward one and push it down, that's for screens. You can see you've got three little teeth that stick out right there. And so when you press in on a, a wire, or I should say a mesh screen, it grabs the screen, pushes it in, hooks it, and now you've depressed and you're able to fire in your staple and you'll actually be able to grab that mesh screen to be able to attach it correctly. Now, if you want to do wire and you're looking to be able to shoot and catch that wire that you're trying to attach, just take this up and flip it around and stick it down. Oops. Now you have the two teeth, the slightly bigger ones, and now I'll grab the wire and then repeat the process, press your trigger. And if you just want to go back to storage mode to do your normal staples, flip it back around again, press it down, have it say store, and the accessory is put away and you won't lose it. Okay, so if you like having your tool on your belt so you don't have to put it down somewhere and then you forget where it's at, you can attach the belt clip, the way it's spring-loaded, you squeeze it in, and it just slides down into place here. So it will look like this. It is a little stiff to get it in, so. There we go, that's one side and it's out. And that's basically it. That is the new Ryobi staple gun. So I'm pretty happy with this one. It's gonna be a lot of fun to use this. I'm gonna go ahead and test it out and see how it works for putting uh, some staples in the drywall and some wood and I'll show you those pictures. Okay, I got three different materials here. I got some drywall, I got some painted particle board, and I have a piece of two by four normal white pine stud. Um, I'm gonna take some quarter inch staples, I'm gonna load the gun, I'm gonna fire two staples into each, one at minimum force and then one at maximum force into each material, and then we'll show you an up close a uh, picture or a video of what each of those staples looks like in those materials so you can see what this gun is capable of doing at the minimum and maximum. Set the minimum. Go in the max. All right, maximum. Okay, so we have minimum here, and we have maximum power right here. And honestly, they're about the same. The maximum went in a little bit deeper. It's hard to tell probably from what you can see on the camera, but it's really not that much different between the two. So I was a little surprised there. I expected with the wood that the minimum would be sticking out a bit. Maybe it was just a softer piece, but it had a lot of penetration. Moving on to the particle board, a little bit difference here, but again, it's very minimum from what you can tell. You got the minimum setting here, maximum. Maximum almost as flush. The minimum, not quite so much. I would definitely come back and use a hammer on this, but they're really similar. So again, I'm kind of disappointed that there wasn't a bigger difference here. So it's either just that powerful or there's really not that big of a difference between the two settings. And then drywall, same thing. Now, of course, drywall is very soft but I kind of expected at maximum power, this would have driven it a lot more considering that the minimum was already flush and the maximum is only just past flush. Okay, so overall, I'm still very happy with the stapler. I'm just a little bit disappointed that there doesn't seem to be a bigger difference in these materials between the minimum setting and the maximum power setting. Um, but ultimately, that doesn't ruin the tool for me at all. It's still doing exactly what I want it to do. And again, it's really here to replace my old uh, nail and staple gun. I don't ever really use this as a nail gun because I have dedicated uh, air powered nail guns on hand. So I was always using this as a staple and it's just really big and bulky for that use. So I'm gonna really enjoy using Ryobi's lighter and smaller staple gun in the future for all my projects. Hope you got something out of this video and if you're interested in having a Ryobi staple gun then head over to Home Depot and go ahead and buy one while they're probably still on sale with the holiday shopping. And we'll see you next time on Grunt Cave.